<laughs> I cannot see some of the, the, your face. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, respected governors and chief ministers, and also some, I think, ministers and some dignitaries. And actually, we are same human being. So I usually used to prefer to describe brothers and sisters. Basically, we are same. Physically, mentally, emotionally, we are same. Entire six billion human beings are same human being. So actually, world of human beings, just one human family. So within that, of course, different language, within different races, uh, also different religions, like that. But these are, I believe, secondary. Most important, fundamental thing is we are same human being. And meantime, everyone want happy life. Do not want suffering or problem. Every human being, I think including animals, uh, also have right to overcome suffering. So, here I'm talking to a same human brother, sisters. Of course, language barriers and some other barriers, but these are minor. Important is we can communicate, I think, through our eyes, through smiles, isn't it? Like that. So, indeed, I'm very, very happy to come here. Although I have been in Bhopal, I think, I, I can't remember, but there are several times. Uh, this occasion, in something special occasion, a quite big meeting, uh, uh, and also, I think that the topic is about human rights. So, indeed, very happy. <coughs> Firstly, I want to respond to your uh, your, your sort of the expression. Uh, I should not consider be a foreigner, but rather a uh, uh, person of this country. So actually, <laughs> circumstances forced on me <laughs> the major portion of my life, you see, live in this country. <laughs> so, so I usually describe myself as a son of India, because the, the, this body survived, last and now, uh, over 51 years, this body survived by Indian dals and rice and the chapati. <laughs> and just today, at lunchtime, the Raja Bhavan is provide very good dal, very good chapati. <laughs> and then most important, this brain, this is some sort of certain concept or certain thought. This brain is actually come from Nalanda tradition, India. So therefore, physical level and particularly the mental level, uh, there is sufficient reason to describe myself as a son of India. Then, also, wherever I go, I always talk two things. One, uh, well-being of six billion human beings, including uh, say the safe world, safe environment because I'm one of them. If six billion human beings happy, peaceful, 
naturally, I get maximum benefit. If world becoming more suffering, and environment or global warming really become serious, then everybody suffer, including myself. So therefore, even from the selfish viewpoint, we have to think about six billion human beings. Now, in order to be happy six billion human beings, money, one part, not the really important matter. I think, you see, these, I mean, uh, Usually, the people always talk importance of money, economy, economy, economy. Like G7 or D, G, what it, G, G8 or G20. Uh, concerning about money. So when global economic crisis happened, many people really get the feeling, the end of the world, that kind of attitude. It is wrong. Money important. But other values, there. I think the Indian Prime Minister recently in Washington expressed that India compared to China. Economy field, little sort of I mean, behind. But India, other values. Uh, democracy, rule of law, transparent, and freedom of speech, freedom of press and human rights, these things. So these are fundamental value. Uh, economy important, but economy is the only human value. No, no, no. Because economy, money matter, deal with physical comfort. Of course, with money, you get better education. There is something different. But basically, money provides good food, good clothes, good shelter, and good facility. With money, you can't buy wisdom. You can't buy peace of mind. Peace of mind, wisdom, must create by yourself. So inner peace there, even economically, a little difficult. Okay, that person can be a very happy person, very happy family. And with neighbors, warm hearted, with warm heartedness, with neighbor, always. How say, because of that, mix, where? Uh, uh, very friendly atmosphere. Compassionate mind there. Trust will come. Trust is there. Real unity there. Real friendship there. Without trust, full of suspicion, distrust, how can develop genuine friendship? We human beings, social animal, we need friendship. The basis of friendship, of cooperation, all these based on trust. Trust very much related with mutual respect. Mutual respect comes sense of concern of others will be. So compassion really works. Well, very, very important matter in order to build happy individual, happy family, happy society. So we must pay more attention about our inner value rather than just the money. I think as far as inner value is concerned, I think there's very little room about corruption. Money matter, there's plenty of places, corruption, all level. <laughs> Even India, <laughs> rule of law, ju independent judiciary, and the free press, you see, there is sort of counter to sort the of force, you see, to reduce these, uh, sort of what is the, uh, like corruption, these things. But even then, you see, some, sometimes, you see, <laughs> sometimes it happens. Then, of course, those close society are corruption. There's no other sort of, kind of balanced way. No freedom of speech, no independent judiciary, isn't it? So, so my main point is, I, wherever I go, 
I always talk about our inner value. Compassion. Compassion brings peace of mind and also bring healthy body. You, I mean, I, I, someone used to mention that people consider me as a uh, reincarnation of our Lokutishwara. Or maybe, but our manifestation of our Lokutishwara without uh, gallbladder. <laughs> About two years ago, some problems. So, uh, through surgery, gallbladder removed. So my body is not complete human body. <laughs> some important organ missing. <laughs> and that also I jokingly see telling people uh, since then. Some people, when I, when I give sort of public sort of talk, they met many people used to come. So among them, uh, some people may have this sort of belief that I don't have uh, what's the healing power. So, so I, I, since then I sort of expressed, uh, I think 2008, October, I went through surgery, removed this gallbladder. So that scientifically shows that Lama have no healing power. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> so in any way, uh, so I always you see, try to promote this inner value. So that's actually India's, I think, through centuries, I think more than the, uh, I think more than two uh, thousands, almost two, three thousands, the concept of ahimsa. Uh, you see, not only just idea, but practice, generally. Of course, uh, here and there, a little pockets, pockets, some problems, Sometimes it happen, but basically, uh, last so many centuries, ahimsa concept preserve. People practice. So during India's freedom fight, Mahatma Gandhiji implement this century-old concept in political independent freedom struggle. So it very successfully. You see, because of that, done, like that. Uh, this is number one, my commitment to promotion of ahimsa, human value, or compassion. My second commitment is promotion of religious harmony. That also India's tradition. Uh, nearly 3,000 years, the different religions you see, develop within the country and also give shelter, different religion of outside world, come here and settle happily. So India is, I think, the only nation where whole world major religious tradition live together. So these are uh, really greatness of India. Uh, so these two things, promotion of ahimsa, based on compassion, promotion of religious harmony, these are India's sort of tradition, India's ancient thought. So I carry this message, so I describe myself as a messenger of India. That's all. So, although I come, uh, 59, I came here, not voluntarily, <laughs> but circumstances force me, you see, come here to, to take political asylum. But actually, uh, spiritually, historically, this is real our spiritual home. Now, now about the human right. Now, firstly, I think uh, since I think human species eventually develop, although the biological, uh, bio biological way, physical structure itself is it through centuries 
2,000 years, right? Uh, you see some change. I think, for example, our brain bigger, bigger, bigger like that. But mainly, with help of, with basis of this brain, I think human intelligence. This is really marvelous, human intelligence. So for that, then with with that, the knowledge, or word language, rich language, right? Uh, and with that, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas is developed. So for that, individual freedom is very essential. Without individual freedom, human beings one I think good quality, creativity, nature, that cannot utilize. If, body of people just waiting order. You can't develop individual creativity nature. So without that, the society cannot transform, uh, cannot change, uh, uh, cannot advance. So therefore, individual freedom right is very, very essential. Now, any society, any community, those people, those individuals who have some kind of sort of the ability of vision, they can easily find faults of the ruling sort of system. So these people becoming critical about system. So then totalitarian or regime where no individual freedom, then these people become casualties. Where these people become target. So the protection of human right is actually helping to more civilize, right? more, more advance, more advance. So therefore, the protection of human right is very, very important, very important work. Of course, this country, I think basically, uh, I, I think very good. But still, sometimes, due to, I'm mean, frankly speaking, due to caste system, sometimes it's a little, uh, the lower caste seems so sometimes some difficulties. So we need some special pay. And also the poverty, this gap, rich and poor. Now, this country also now happening. It's very sad. We must pay more serious attention how to reduce this gap. And I think we must make every effort to promote the, what's it, to, 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 to remove poverty. I think very, very essential. All the people are doing, I think, all level. So this is about human right. And in order to develop genuine sense of human rights. I think this is very much related with sense of uh, concern of others' well-being and respect others' right. Uh, and also the sense of global responsibility. And also the, the environment issue also, the, where sense of global responsibility there, then the interest or concern about global uh, the, the ecology problem automatically come. So here, sense of global responsibility. Now that based on sense of oh, six million human beings, oneness of six million human beings, just one world. So these are, I feel, very, very important. Now for that, the various different religious traditions have, if you follow or practice sincerely, then all major religious traditions have the same potential to help to, to build these things. Uh, in the religious field, no difference of nationality, no difference of boundary. We're talking about human brothers, sisters. Whether the theistic religion, 
entire human being created by one God. Non theistic religious tradition, Jainism, such as Jainism and Buddhism, no concept of creator, but we, you see, the, according to law of causality, due to individuals' sort of karma, uh, we came to on this planet. So we are saying like that. So here already we have harmony among the different situations already here. But still we need more effort. My experience, you see, to build close, closer sort of relation with among different religious traditions is, you see, study the other sort of philosophy or other con others concept and then look the result of these different sort of traditions. When I met some Christian uh, practitioner, now for example, the late Mother Teresa, she totally, I mean her life totally sort of was dedicated for well-being of less privileged people. That kind of strength, that kind of sort of determination come from Catholic belief, Catholic faith. So you see, all religion, all religious traditions have the same potential to build healthy human being. There is a different philosophy, different concept. Some say there is creator, some say no creator. That doesn't matter. This is so long, the real message, message of love, compassion, forgiveness, these implement, then same. I usually describe different religion, something like different medicine. You can't say this medicine is best. Similarly, we can't say this religion is best. Best or best or not have to relative relative or related with the individual. For certain individual, this religion is best. Now, for example, my own case, I'm Buddhist. For me, Buddhism is best because Buddhist sort of thinking is most effective, most sort of suitable according to my mental position. Mental position. So, another one Christian, one Hindu who believe Atma. Buddhists do not believe Atma, Anatma. <laughs> so these differences. Uh, but basically, Hinduism, and, and you, you rightly mentioned you see, Buddhism and Hinduism, I usually describe as a twin brother. So Buddha come from Hindu family, actually. And Buddhist, Buddhism, I mean, Buddha's idea, new idea of Buddhism based on Hinduism. No question, isn't it? Historically, the new idea uh, originally used to come from the existing ideas. Well, that's like, like that. So in any way, the Hindu, the Hinduism, or concept of Atma is most effective. So for him, Hinduism is, or concept of Atma is best. So for me, uh, according to my mental disposition, Anatma theory is most suitable, <laughs> like that. So we can't say this religion is best, just according to the individual. For this person, this religion is best. So, so meantime, uh, we can, uh, uh, and here, you see, we, we have to make a distinction. Faith and respect. Faith towards one's own religion. Respect to all religion. That we can turn. Uh, then also, you see here, one sort of idea, I think century old sort of idea or concept, concept of one truth, one religion, concept of several truth, several religion. So this looks contradiction, but in the terms of individual person, concept of one truth, one religion is very important. In the terms of the society, in the terms of the plural, plural way, group of people, then the concept of several truth, several religion is related, like that. So no problem. 
so we need genuine harmony among different religious tradition. Harmony does not mean just we have no sort of serious sort of kasuta, a conflict, but we have to sit together, exchange our experience, uh, to learn their experience. That's very important. Through that way, you can develop genuine respect, genuine admiration. As I mentioned earlier, I am Buddhist. Philosophical viewpoint, of course, there's certain sort of a philosophy or certain concept. You see, from the Buddhist viewpoint, there is contradiction. But it doesn't matter. As far as they are practical, because the, the practical level, I really admire our Christian brothers, sisters, Muslim brothers, sisters, the Hindus and Islam, or Hindus or Jews and all other. I have, I usually, wherever I go, I always, when time permits, I always go to church, or express my admiration, respect, and mosque, and mandir, like that. Especially the six or say, Gurdwara. 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 You get prasad. Uh, you, you got prasad. Uh, one time, I, th I think in Varanasi or some, some, somewhere, I start that one day, I start pilgrimage from mosque, small mosque, and then Hindu temple, then church, and then Buddhist temple, like that. Uh, about afternoon, the last Gurdwara. So I also feel a little hungry. So the prasad is so blessing, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Beside, I think, uh, mysterious blessing, but actually very good for <laughs> for stomach, <laughs> like that. In any way, uh, uh, that kind of sort of what's the practice. Uh, then you really get the the what's the admiration of. Uh, others sort of value, others tradition, and through that way you get genuine sort of appreciation, like that. Then, here, yeah, Chief Minister already mentioned about the, uh, the plan to create Buddhist University. Now recently I was in Bhubaneswar, and also the Baroda, and I think May I'm going to Bihar, Patna. So the, uh, the concerned people, the state government, is really showing interest to sort of say, set up some kind of uh, 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 Buddhist institution, Buddhist sort of also the academy. So everywhere I suggested Buddhism, you can di uh, divide it three parts as Chief Minister. This morning I discussed, so he already mentioned. <laughs> so you see, Buddhist, Buddhism you see, can be uh, three parts. Buddhist science, uh, Buddhist concept or philosophy, or Buddhist viewpoint, or then Buddhist religion. So, so as far as Buddhist religion is concerned, that's only for Buddhist. But Buddhist concept or Buddhist philosophy, including like the quantum physics, one great Indian uh, nuclear physicist, Raja, Raja. Ah, Raja Ramana, oh, once in Delhi, you see, we have some kind of meeting. He mentioned to me, he saw one Nagarjuna's writing uh, 2,000 years ago. He found very similar idea of quantum physics. So he, as an Indian, uh, he, he expressed to me, he feel proud. Uh, the quantum physics in the West is very new. Uh, to India, uh, even 2,000 years ago, that essence of that concept already there, he mentioned, like that. So these, you see, quantum, sort of, what's today? 
inter interdependency. Uh, there is no absolute objectively. These are uh, Buddhist concept. And, all, and also the concept of law of causality. So these concepts, uh, I, I think Sanskrit word, patitismopand, dependent and arising, interconnectedness. So this, very helpful, although this concept comes from Buddhism, but it can be applicable in economy field, environment issue, and I think politicians, when you carry some sort of election sort of, or sort of campaign, I think this concept very, very useful to look various aspects. If you just sort of want one angle, then you may not win. So you have to look from a wider perspective. Uh, that's very important. So every field, including health, just medication, just one part, we must look peace of mind calm mind, fresh mind, uh, very, very good for health. So even health, even concern for health, holistic sort of view is very essential, very helpful. So like that, in economy field, uh, in environment field, in human rights field, every, in order to build healthy society, just money alone won't bring happy society. We need a lot of different things. So that concept is very, very helpful. Then lastly, uh, so, so therefore, these institutions hopefully uh, can be a learning center uh, about Buddhist science, Buddhist concept. So Buddhist science, although the external matter is also there, but as far as matter is concerned, uh, the Western science, modern science is much more advanced. But inner science, science of mind, science of emotion, that, that field, Eastern philosophy, Indian philosophy, Indian thought, much advanced. So including Buddhism. So last, uh, now nearly 25 years, I had serious sort of discussion with modern scientists, mainly four fields. Cosmology, neurobiology, uh, uh, subatomic physics, and then uh, psychology. These four fields, you see, we have common ground. So you see, uh, we also learn from their finding. Very useful, very helpful. And for them, uh, our experience, our viewpoint, very helpful, particularly in the field of psychology. So some Western scientists or scientists or some, some philosopher describe Buddhism is not religion, but rather science of mind. So these coming institutions now can be useful for further research like that. Uh, then with this connection, I think, I think someone also mentioned about women's right. Uh, of course, women's right. I'm I'm looking from different angle. Look, human history. In very very ancient time, no concept of leadership. Everybody equal. All family member work together, and whatever they get something, uh, they share together. And then eventually population increase, some mischievous people, then happening. So the concept of leadership come. At that time, no rule of education. Therefore, uh, the real quality, real quality in order to uh, be leader, physical strength. So that is, I think, male dominance come from that way. And then eventually education, become important. Education brings more equal, male and female, both more equal. Now today, 21st century, beginning of 21st century, education, I think generally speaking, highly developed, but still something lacking. You look 
those of the country where materially, materially value, materially for the facility, and also modern education highly developed, but in these society, some problems, some crimes, particularly among the younger, younger people. Even if sometimes the rate of suicide also increasing, like Japan, uh, and also some, some, some other country. And deep inside, lonely feeling. So this clearly shows we are lacking some kind of moral ethics or spiritual values. When I say spiritual value, not necessarily with religious belief. The India already have, thousand years already have secular ethics. So this is very, very relevant to today's world, without touching religion, but certain deeper, uh, or say the spiritual values, such as compassion, forgiveness, these things. Uh, so some time back, I had one sort of audience, uh, Advani, uh, and he mentioned to me one factor for India's successful about democracy. He mentioned a thousand years, India have one sort of uh, tradition that among different religious tradition, Charvaka, you know, Charvaka, uh, nihilist, Charvaka, nihilist, denying existence of next life or existence of God, these things. Only physical existence. Uh, only physical existence. Uh, so the philosophical field is a lot of sort of uh, or sort of criticism or argument about that view. Yet, person who holding that view refer Rishi, Rishi, respected saint or something. Uh, so ideolo ideology, big different, but as a person still respect. So he mentioned that. So that's. I think, so therefore, the, those Charvaka, I think something like ancient non-believer. So this tradition, respect those non-believer. So today also, now modern non-believer, we must respect them, isn't it? So when we talk about ethics based on religion, then cannot be universal. But ethics based on non-belief, uh, secu secular way, then it can be universal. So here, now time come, we need more effort or emphasis, promotion of compassion, forgiveness, these things. Now for that reason, biologically, women, female, greater potential, because firstly, female acting like mother. I mean, like or actually, you see, mother, you see, nine months, you see, baby, keep here. And then milk. These are the symbol of compassion. Here, I think we, everybody, we come from our mother. We survived with mother's affection, mother's care with mother's milk. So that's a biological field, biological sort of, sort of factor. So according to some scientists, they say biologically, female have more sensitivity about others' pain, others' suffering. So therefore, time as such, we have to make effort to promote compassion love, forgiveness, female should carry more active role regarding promotion of these things. So therefore, uh, around this 21st century, I think women all over the world, I think should take more active role in the society in order to promote deeper human values. So your experience how much sort of deep sort of affection towards your own child. And the child side also. See, at the time, just after birth, no idea who is that person. 
but emotionally or biologically totally relying on that person. These are biological. So these are seeds of compassion. I always telling certain amount of my compassion here I mean, these days, actually seed of that compassion come from my mother, not from religion. Of course, Buddhism later sort of immense help to further sort of the increase. But the seed come from my mother. My mother, illiterate, uneducated, just a farmer's sort of woman, mother, but very, very kind. So seed I got from my mother. So we everybody is a come from mother. So all have same potential, same seed. Now look at more deeper way on that, then we can change our life, our mental attitude. Different mental attitude brings inner strength. Uh, inner strength brings self-confidence. Self-confidence then can be honest, transparent. And that brings trust. Faith. Faith, right? Trust. Trust brings happy society. So, that's all. Thank you. Entire six billion human beings are same human being. So actually, world of human being, just one human family. So within that, of course, different language, within different races, uh, also different religions, like that. But these are, I believe, secondary. Most important, fundamental thing is we are same human being. And meantime, everyone want happy life. Do not want suffering or problem. Every human being, I think including animals, uh, also have right to overcome suffering. So, here I am talking to a same human brother, sisters tradition, India. So therefore, physical level, and particularly the mental level, uh, there is sufficient reason to describe myself as a son of India. Then, also, wherever I go, I always talk two things. One, uh, well-being of six billion human beings, including as a day, safe world, safe environment. Because I'm one of them. If six billion human beings happy, peaceful, naturally, I get maximum benefit. If world becoming more suffering, and environment or global warming really become serious. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot see some of the <laughs> your face. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, respected governors and chief ministers, and also some, I think, ministers and some dignitaries. And actually, we are the same human being. So I usually prefer to describe brothers and sisters. Basically, we are same. Physically, mentally, emotionally, we are same of this country. So actually, <laughs> circumstances forced on me <laughs> now major portion of my life, you see, live in this country. <laughs> so, 
So I usually describe myself as a son of India because the, the, this body survived, last now, uh, over 51 years. This body survived by Indian dals and rice and the chapati. <laughs> Just today, at lunchtime, the Raja Bhavan is provide very good dal, <laughs> very good chapati. <laughs> and then most important, this brain, this is some sort of certain concept of certain thought. This brain is actually come from Nalanda. Of course, language barriers and some other barriers, but these are minor. Important is we can communicate, I think, through our eyes, through smiles, isn't it? Like that. So indeed, I'm very, very happy to come here. Although I have been in Bhopal, I think, I, I can't remember, but there are several times. Uh, this occasion in something special occasion, a quite big meeting, uh, uh, and also, I think that the topic is about human rights. So, indeed, very happy. <coughs> Firstly, I want to respond to your, uh, your, your sort of the expression. Uh, I should not consider be a foreigner, but rather uh, a person. <laughs> 